Hi, I'm Daphne Richards and this is Augie. A viewer recently asked about why certain trees or other plants that were once highly promoted are now on the invasive plant list. And many of them are still sold in nurseries. Well, just as beauty is in the eye of the beholder, the interpretation of the term invasive is subjective and often depends on the environment. So, a plant that is invasive in one situation may be much less so in others. Rainfall and soil type will influence this quite a lot. A plant that is invasive here in central Texas may be much less so or not at all in the sandy soils and xeric climate of far west Texas. And those same characteristics that lead a species to earn the invasive label here may be prized in other areas where other plants can, are challenging to grow. Most plant species that are labeled invasive are not native to the region where they've been given this negative description. So then, are native plants not considered invasive? Not usually. In the case of native plants, instead of invasive, you'll often hear the label aggressive used. Now, to the untrained ear, those two adjectives may not sound all that different, but to plant people, they are. One big difference is that invasive species are known to escape confinement into unwanted areas. And when they get out of your yard, into your neighbor's or a green belt, they tend to take over and choke out native species, thereby affecting the entire microclimate in that area and most likely, likely also affecting the delicate balance of wildlife living there. Any invasive species list will change from region to region. And species considered invasive here in Central Texas may be prized in other regions where they don't escape as easily. Again, in far west Texas, where there's much less rainfall, an invasive species may thrive with very little care or supplemental irrigation. Although we've received adequate rainfall this year, it hasn't been that long since central Texas was in a severe drought and we were all rethinking our landscapes for water conservation. Which leads us full circle back to the question of why many invasive species are sold in nurseries. The situation is a delicate balance, and in general, we should avoid plants that are considered invasive where we live. And as a final note, we should mention the category of noxious weed, which is a designation given to plants that are illegal in certain reasons. Those species have been shown to severely affect not only the natural areas, but also commerce. Just think kudzu. Our plant of the week is Four Nerve Daisy, a wonderful native species that does great in full sun or afternoon shade with very little water or maintenance. They prefer rocky, well-drained soil, so if you have heavy clay, you may find them a challenge. If that's the case in your garden, consider building berms or raised beds with sandy soil and some added organic matter, but not too much. Or even in containers where, again, you can control the soil and drainage. That will work with this beautiful perennial. The bright yellow, cheerful flowers will greet you from spring all the way through the heat of summer. And you'll need several plants for grouping, since four nerve daisy stays a petite six inches by six inches in size. Water sparingly and don't mulch heavily, as these plants easily rot if they stay too wet. Our viewer picture comes from Kathy and Shelby trial in Garden Ridge. What a gorgeous garden of bluebonnets and poppies, in deer country no less. It's always rewarding to see how our viewers are feeding the wildlife all year. Nicholas Martin has coneflower growing next to Salvia gregii, and David Fuller in San Antonio sent us a photo of his field of Indian blankets that he sewed last September. Our viewers are also very creative. Danny Demarest shared pictures of her succulent garden. She writes, When we first moved into our house, the previous owners had left behind a big fountain. The fountain had a big crack in the bottom basin, and it was always surrounded by a puddle of water and was a motel for mosquitoes. They couldn't even go outside for a few minutes without being covered in bites. They pulled up the fountain, which had been partially buried, and filled in the hole that was left behind. Rather than just dumping the fountain, they repaired the crack, set it up in a corner of the yard, and filled it with soil and succulents. I'd like to remind you that the Travis County Office of the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service is here to serve you all year long. Call us or come by anytime to visit our demonstration gardens and check out our workshops and events to get your garden growing at travis-tx.tamu.edu. Well, we'd love to hear from you, so check us out at krlu.org to send us your pictures, questions, and videos. Mm -hmm.